A deadly epidemic that is spreading through the Red Sea has killed off an entire species of sea urchin in Israel's Gulf of Elat, imperiling the region's uniquely resilient coral reefs. The whole population of black sea urchins, a species known for helping uh, keeping coral reefs healthy, was wiped out over a couple of months, according to a team from Tel Aviv University. Their findings, published in two peer-reviewed journals, cite mass mortality in other countries in the region as well, including Jordan, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. The probable culprit, a disease-causing silite parasite that brings with it a fast death perhaps even the same one that has wreaked havoc on sea urchin populations in the Caribbean. Dr. Amri Bronstein, he's a senior lecturer at the School of Zoology, the Wise Faculty of Life Sciences, and the Steinhardt Museum of Natural History at Tel Aviv University joins us now. He stands behind this research. Thank you very much for finding time to speak to us on uh, this topic. Uh, are we humans uh, to blame uh, again? Because I, I hear something like this and I immediately think climate change. Well, it is definitely too early to say if it's climate change. We're currently working on the reasons why we are seeing these mortalities. I think we should first concentrate about what it is that we are seeing, how severe it is, and what should we do uh, immediately in order to try and mitigate uh, um, these issues. Um, and it is important to understand that actually what we're seeing now that has spread to the Red Sea, in fact, started in the Mediterranean. This is where we first identified these mass mortalities in the northern coasts uh, of the eastern Mediterranean, uh, along the coast of Turkey and Greece. And that, follow, that was followed by an invasion of these sea urchins that we know so well from the Gulf of Eilat and Aqaba. So the sea urchins themselves invaded the Mediterranean. The disease started in the Mediterranean and is now spread to the native uh, population of these sea urchins in, in the Red Sea where it is spreading very rapidly. Is it reversible? Uh, is there something that can be done in order to, to revive the population of sea urchins? Uh, that's an excellent question. So it is important to understand that on the ground, there is no treatment, there is no cure, at least none that, that we are aware of, and definitely nothing that was uh, previously done in marine environments. So treating or vaccination, that's out of the question uh, for the time being. But what we can do and what we should be doing is concentrate on what other steps uh, can be taken um, and, and conducted at the moment. Uh, and these are simple. In order to maintain these species, and we don't know how long this disease is going to be in the field, but what, from what we've learned uh, from the Caribbean, this can last for decades in the Caribbean we still see the effect of, of that uh, early disease in the early 80s that is still with us uh, four decades later. So what we need to do is maintain broodstock populations of these uh, species. In other words, keep uh, individuals of these sea urchins in uh, controlled land-based facilities where we can grow them. And maybe in the futures, if conditions will be right, to um, return them back to nature. But the, the, the question um, is, however, how, can we, how can we correct these conditions to make sure that that is feasible? Because otherwise it sounds like we'll end up with another zoo or another, you know, one of those uh, centers, like the ones you see in California, et cetera, where you put your hands in, you know, these little, these little buckets and, and enjoy uh, uh, sea life while sea life should be in the water. Other for educational yeah, that's, that's, use, probably. Yeah, we're not talking about a facility that is actually focused on on uh, educational um, or. Um, um, broad yeah, yeah, I understand, public, but but I'm asking uh, about how purposes. we can correct the conditions in the sea. Is there anything that can be done? We should we should prevent them from happening. Correcting things after they have happened. Are, um, and that's the, 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 the realistic news are beyond us. Um, the efforts, and it doesn't matter how many efforts we will spend, it is not possible um, to fix these things once they started. So now we have to wait it out. The question is, 
um, how long will it last, how severe will it be, and what will be the consequences for the rest of the reef. Uh, but keeping that in mind, it is important to understand that we still must act immediately because our window of opportunity for maintaining these broodstock populations are closing very rapidly. In fact, in the Red Sea, we lost viable populations to build these broodstocks on. So we are actually uh, left with the need to uh, resort to the Medi remaining healthy Mediterranean population along the Israeli coastline. So this uh, invasive species might be actually turning out to be, um, you know, some kind of a bright spot, but this window is closing. This disease will reach also the Israeli uh, Mediterranean coastline within days, weeks, a few months. Um, honestly, we don't know. Okay, I have plenty more questions for you, but sadly we have to part here. Uh, Dr. Amri Bronstein, thank you very much, Tel Aviv University.